Hey guys, welcome back to Business Statistics. Um, this is section 6.2, the Central Limit Theorem. Um, we're just going to get right into it. Um, the Central Limit Theorem describes the sampling distribution of a uh, sample mean. That seems like an overly simplified uh, definition, but note that what we have been working with, what the sampling distributions that we have been working with normally are, they normally are describing something about X, okay, not about a sample mean. Okay, so um, the idea is that we're going to be running distributions on a sample mean, not on X. So normally when we would have a mu, it's understood that we're in reference to x. It's the mu of x. Okay, now we're the mu of x bar or, you know, the sigma of x bar as opposed to the sigma of x. Okay, another way to think about that um, is uh, my layman's term definition. I say for a sufficiently large sample size n from a population that is not normally distributed, the sample mean x bar has approximately a normal distribution. Okay, so what we have here, and this is, you know, this is uh, why you got to go through the slides and watch these videos. But what we have here is the central theorem, the, the central limit theorem. It, the purpose of it is to kind of relinquish some of the confines or come some of the constraints of us having to know what a background distribution is or what a, a governing distribution is for X, right? So like in real life, if we were doing some sort of like um, sampling or whatnot, it's we can't just make this assumption that, oh, well, the underlying distribution is Poisson or the underlying distribution is binomial or, you know, like, well, we have N fixed trials with independent probabilities, blah, blah, blah. Like we can't just make that assumption, right? We don't, if... If we knew so, so much about a distribution, why would we be running tests on it, right? If, if we always knew a population mean or if we always knew a population standard deviation, why would, be, why would we be running tests on it? So what this central limit theorem is doing is it's uh, giving us an opportunity to take some of the constraints off and then to formalize um, being able to run statistics on a distribution without having to actually know what the underlying distribution is. Okay, so then we'll move on to sample size requirement. If all samples of size n are selected from a population of measurements with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, the distribution of the sample mean has the following. The mean and standard error of the sampling distribution. Sample mean mu sub x bar is just equal to mu. And sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n. So we already went over that sigma square root of n um, thing, and that you know that's what it is. But this mu sub x bar is, I don't know, fairly interesting in that it's saying that like, so like what this formula implies, okay, so the, the, the concept behind this formula, um, not the theory, but like the concept behind the, the formula is that regardless of whatever distribution we have, so say we're working with Poisson, okay, Poisson was the, the discrete distribution, um, where we had like a certain number of things that happened over an interval of time or space, right? So like I think the the thing that I had used was like, okay, during peak rush hour, how many cars go through a McDonald's drive through Okay, we can say, oh, well, that'll be Poisson distributed, blah, 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 blah. We have a mean, we have a standard deviation, whatnot. We have formulas to solve that, okay? But what it is saying is that regardless of distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution, okay, the mean of the sampling distribution, not the mean of the normal distribution, like the, oh, I don't want to say normal, the mean of the regular distribution of it, um, those means are the same. So the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the underlying standard distribution or the true distribution that we're using, okay? But the thing that's great about the the central limit theorem and about using the sampling distribution is that it does not matter what the underlying distribution is because it does not matter what the underlying distribution is we can then just use the normal distribution for the sampling distribution okay so effectively we take everything that we learned from modules four and five discrete continuous whatever and we say yeah 
But if we're not working with the distribution of x, and we instead decide to work with the distribution of a sampling mean, we can kind of truncate all of that and say, all right, well now we get to just treat the sampling distribution as a normal distribution. And that's easy, you know, like we, we've we done normal problems. We've, we've used that curve, you know, like that's, that to me, you know, that was probably the easiest of the distributions that we had worked on or just kind of logically the easiest way to go about um, um, solving for probabilities and whatnot. So it, it allows us to kind of formalize every distribution, kind of turn them into the normal distribution and um, makes life a little bit easier. So we'll see how that kind of plays out here. Okay, so example two, the manufacturer uh, of cans of salmon that are supposed to have a net weight of six ounces tells you that the net weight is a random variable with a mean of 6.05 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.18 ounces. Suppose that you draw a random sample of 36 cans, find the probability that the mean weight of the sample is less than 5.97 ounces. Okay, so let's do what we normally do. And first, let's um, write down what we have. Okay, we have a mean of 6.05. Okay, a standard deviation of 0.18 and an n sample size of 36 and we want to know the probability that the mean weight of the sample is less than um, 5.97 ounces so we'll say the probability that x bar is less than 5.97 okay and so what we do here is we're just going to do this, uh, you know, very standard thing that we did um, before, and that well, we we want to turn, um, we want to turn this into a z because we know how to use the table in order to in order to do that. Okay, um, maybe I should have listed the formula up here. So here's something else for you guys to write. So z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. So that's the formula that we're going to be using here. I don't know why I didn't put that on there to begin with. But that's another thing for you to write as you follow along. Okay, so we use this formula. We say z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. And we just plug in what we have. All right, so our proposed x bar is 5.97. So 5.97 minus our mu of 6.05 divided by our sigma, which is divided by our square root of n. So our square root of 36. All right, and if you go ahead and do that math, um, this will all shake out to negative 2.67. Okay, so then this makes this probability expression the probability that z not z bar not anything like that just z is less than negative 2.67 which is just a value that we can pull from our table so that's just what we're going to do we're going to go to the table all right so here in the table we're going to find our normal distribution table and we're just looking for negative uh what was it negative 2.67 uh, Z negative 2.6 scroll over to 7.0038 okay so that is that 0.0038 and that's our answer all right guys uh, thanks for tuning into this video um, we will be back with um, module 7 next